Okay, thanks uh, everyone for coming. Um, hope you had a good uh, breakfast break. Uh, before we start, uh, who here uh, is uh, using open source software? Yes. Who is uh, contributing to open source software as a developer in their free time? Good. And uh, who is uh, contributing to open source software in their work time at their company? Okay, a bit less people uh, each, for each question. Uh, that's not surprising. Uh, so we'll see how we can do open source uh, in a company and even in a small company or a startup. A few words about myself first. Uh, so my name uh, is Nicholas. As uh, you can hear, I'm French. Uh, no parlo italiano, so we'll keep. Uh, we'll stick to English. Um, I'm a self-taught developer, so I started uh, to learn coding. Uh, in uh, 2012, I started uh, with a front end, so mostly JavaScript. Uh, tried a bit of PHP, didn't like it so much. Uh, came back to uh, uh, JavaScript for Node.js, React.js, or so all open source uh, technologies. And uh, what's, what's important with that is, as, is uh, I uh, really benefited from the open source community because of all the tools available, uh, because also of the community of developers ready to help you on Stack Overflow of forums. And I think it really shaped uh, my mind run open source. And that's also why I decided to uh, do uh, developer relations. So I joined uh, Microsoft uh, as a developer uh, in the developer relations team and then merged it uh, as a developer advocate. So as a developer advocate, uh, your mission is really to make sure that uh, developers using your uh, company products have the best experience possible uh, to uh, enhance that and also to give back as much as you can to your community of uh, developers. Uh, so it was a get, good way to get involved uh, in open source, and that's why we released uh, one year ago uh, um, an open source software called, called MGML. I will get back to it uh, just after. Uh, and as it took and uh, got uh, really a strong interest from the community, uh, we decided to put more effort in it, uh, and I uh, took over the project as a product lead. I'm on Twitter uh, under the name uh, Nico underscore uh, G, so feel free to... Uh, Ask me questions to uh, start an argument. If you're not, if you don't agree with anything I say, uh, really, I'm open to uh, to anything. So now, why is uh, open source software? So you all raise your hand when you when I ask uh, if you are using some. Um, so I guess you uh, know what open source software is. But let's uh, go back to the very definition uh, for a minute. So. Uh, open source software is software for which uh, the original source code is uh, made available for free and can be redistributed and modified. Uh, so for you, it's probably cool. You can uh, see what other developers coded. Uh, but when you're in a company for like the management team or people uh, with uh, like a more like a business oriented ideas, it's mostly, okay, so you're going to give the work you did on your company time for free. Uh, that's tricky, uh, but we can see that it's not always uh, inc incompatible uh, with a with a company with the idea of a company of a business, uh, also which has to make money. So when you look at it, uh, there are for me there are two uh, categories of companies doing open source. You have some companies uh, that are based on open source. It's really at the core of their um, of their value. It's like uh, also the, their competitive advantage, uh, and they have different models around it. So, for example, sometimes uh, they will provide the open source software, but um, they will uh, charge you for uh, installation, maintenance, uh, update of the, uh, of the software you're using. Uh, sometimes uh, they will uh, ask you to pay if you want to host um, what you, like the app you built with their software uh, on their servers. And other times, uh, they will uh, give you for free uh, the core of the product, but if you want to have additional features, additional services, uh, then you have to pay. So this is for the open source uh, first companies. Now, um, the biggest contributors to, uh, to open source are also companies uh, that do open source on the side. What I, say, uh, what I mean with on the side is that uh, it's not their primary uh, focus. They have uh, apps that are built using those, those uh, software, but the software is not the key, the key value of the company. So for example, if you look at TensorFlow, if you look at uh, TypeScript, React.js, uh, Cassandra, it's all provided by companies who do something else than this core product, but they build this for their own needs, 
and they decided that they realized that it could help also a lot of other developers and they decided uh, to make it available for free. So now if you look at that, uh, your company probably solves problem internally, uh, you probably develop some tools and why not uh, get involved in open source, why not release some of those tools that are not uh, like uh, critical to your business but really help you uh, to help other developers. That's a, that's a good thing to do, but now you might think, okay, yeah, that would be cool, but why? Like, what, what is even the point of doing that? We put some effort in it. Well, there are plenty of reasons uh, to go into open source. So, uh, one of them uh, is a, well, it's a good way to give back to the community. As we said before, uh, you're benefiting all of you from uh, open source software. You're using it on a daily basis. Uh, well, maybe you want to provide the same way uh, you receive. Uh, and uh, going open source and giving free, free tools and uh, uh, tools that will make the life of developers easier is a good way to do so. Also, uh, open source is always a win-win cycle. It's a take in, give back. It's always like that. So when you release something open source, you will also improve what you released. Uh, what I mean is that, for example, you're using a tool internally, uh, developers will look at it, say, yeah, it's cool, it's a, it's a good way to do, but maybe you could do that this way, and you're also improving your software because you're using it internally. Also, uh, it's a good way to bring uh, your company into the light, uh, it's a good way to make some promotion uh, for, um, for your company, so don't be afraid to, to do that. Uh, Showing, showing code is al al always a good way to get feedback on it uh, and to, uh, to have um, valuable feedback to improve it. Um, it's also a good way to get people to know, uh, to know about your company and to see what you're capable of. And it's a good way to uh, find smart people. Uh, if you consider it, uh, people who contribute to the software you make available for free, that you open source, uh, well, they are contributing to it most of the time on their spare time. As we saw, like, uh, there were more people here contributing to open source on their free time than at their company. Um, so if people contribute to that, you're probably um, giving them the ability to uh, turn a hobby into a job. If they like your product, they contribute to it, uh, well, they would probably love to join your company. So don't uh, underestimate this part. Now, uh, hopefully you're convinced that there are uh, plenty of reasons to go open source, but how do we do it? Well, it always starts with the same thing. Actually, uh, like doing uh, open source or like uh, creating a company, it always starts with, uh, with, the same, uh, with the same core thing. It's uh, solving a problem. Uh, so if I uh, show you about uh, what we did, for example, it's, uh, if you look at the left of the screen, uh, you have uh, UI blocks, building blocks that, are, that can be used by anyone, uh, also like people not tech savvy, and they will uh, drag those blocks on the right and create a responsive email. Who here has, always, has ever tried to uh, create a responsive email? How was it? Um, sort of problematic. Problematic? Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, that's exactly that. So you usually uh, will try to find something that will help you because uh, HTML, responsive HTML is very messy. Uh, the reason behind that uh, is that there are a lot of email clients when in the web you have a few browsers available and those email clients, uh, they have no standards between them. They don't follow any standard, any web standard. And also uh, they really support a deprecated uh, subset of HTML. And so what you have to do is, like even for a simple button like that, you have to go back to nested tables, uh, you have to add like a conditional comments for Outlook, you have to use something called a vector markup language, which is also only for Outlook. It's like a good way to go mad. Uh, really, you don't want to uh, create responsive email. So for us, uh, we have this app that I showed you just before. It's built in a React.js, Node.js, so we had to manipulate uh, DOM elements. And for example, if we want to change the background color of this uh, button, we have to go back through all the messy code and try to find uh, where the background color is, is defined. Uh, usually it will be defined at different places, and it's really bad. It's also a good way to uh, like, uh, have a negative impact on your performance because you're manipulating a lot of messy stuff. 
so what we did is actually we created a new markup language that is responsive by design. It was created for our own <coughs> purpose. We needed something that uh, integrated all of those uh, messy acts, messy tricks, uh, and we, we needed a layer of abstraction. So we created it. It's a markup language that compiled into responsive HTML, and it works in Outlook, in Gmail, in Yahoo, uh, automatically. Um, now, so when you look at it, uh, if you need to manipulate uh, the background color of this button, well, it's really easy because with this markup language, it's only one attribute, so we don't have uh, any issue to, to do it. So from this, uh, it was something we used internally for one year. Uh, it was really making, uh, making this easy, and we had like, some people ask how we could uh, do responsive email easily because it was such a mess. And that's when we realized, so after one year after using it internally, that we could actually uh, make it available for other people. And uh, the only thing we did was a bit of, uh, we needed was a bit of work, uh, because actually it was, um, at first it was a JSON format, because it's easier to manipulate inside the app. Uh, but then we decided for email developers, it would be easier to have a XML markup style. And that's why we realized that we actually didn't have to do anything to release something open source. We already had it. And you probably already have something inside your company. Now, having something uh, ready to ship, something ready to, uh, to be uh, released open source, uh, it's good, it's cool, uh, but it's not enough, and you have to do it the right way. And it's not always easy. The first thing is that you need to collaborate really internally. So what I mean by that is uh, that it's really a matter of syncing with all the teams. So for example, you want to be sure that you are not releasing something um, that could um, that that could be that could like lead to some issues for your company. So it's uh, true for the uh, legal part. You don't want to reveal any information that is really a company secret for your company. Um, also, in terms of security, you shouldn't release a source code that can have a harm, that can impact um, negatively your company. Uh, so, like, uh, it could uh, disclose how you use databases, how you classify your data, etc. So, it could make make it easy for other people to take advantage of uh, your company data. And also, well, uh, it's uh, can be the it can seem a trivial, but it, it's important that everyone in the company, and especially the management team, the executive team, know what you are releasing for free. Uh, as I said before, like open source can be seen as something that you're just uh, giving for free without having any, anything back in return. Uh, so be careful with that and make sure to communicate. Really what's important, there is no specific uh, good way to uh, to do that, but what's important is that there is a review. It can be a meeting, it can be a mail, it can be anything. Uh, but make sure that there is a review and that it's quick. So try to set a deadline before you open source it. Everyone is aware of it, everyone agrees, and you can ship it. The next thing you will uh, want to do um, is probably to uh, choose a license. Uh, there is a really important inner inherent uh, legal character uh, due to open source. Uh, so don't under underestimate that. Uh, once again, uh, communicate internally um, and make sure uh, that you make this uh, decision uh, wisely. One of the most uh, popular license is MIT. Uh, when you look at MIT, it's really like uh, the very like you can do more open source than that. Uh, the what MIT means is that anyone can. Uh, copy, modify, uh, merge, redistribute, publish, um, and even sell copies of uh, the software. The only thing it forces is that uh, they include the full copyright notice um, of uh, your uh, library. Uh, BSD is basically MIT, except that it protects you a bit more against uh, the use of uh, the name of your company. So what it says is that uh, people releasing software with your software cannot uh, quote your name, cannot cite your name if you didn't give them the, your express permission. Um, GPL, um, GPL is an interesting license because uh, any software that uses GPL software has to be released as GPL2. So you cannot make a proprietary software uh, just taking advantage of GPL software. Uh, it's like, uh, it's kind of contaminating uh, around, around the, the other softwares. 
Um, what's important again? Yeah, it's really uh, the like the legal matter, not the not the phil phil philosophical uh, aspect of the license. Um, and what you want to make sure is uh, try to have the same license for um, every of your open source software. It make it, it makes it easy to uh, make make them work together, and also for your community to understand uh, what you're doing uh, with the open source software that you release. Now. Uh, Choosing a license is good, uh, publishing it is good, uh, but open source is not something that you just do at uh, D-Day. You publish something, you're a super cool company, you release open source, that's really nice. Uh, it's not that easy. Uh, open source should be a commitment. You should uh, ask yourself the right questions before doing it uh, and make sure that you're ready to do it. So when I say uh, commitment, it means that you will have to do the cleaning. Doing the cleaning is basically uh, addressing the issues raised by the community, the community of users uh, of your software. Uh, so you will hopefully attract users. Uh, they will find issues. They will ask for new features that you really didn't see it. Uh, so make sure that you will be able to commit to that and also dedicate some work time in your company. When you, you get the agreement from your company to uh, release the open source software, make sure that they also understand that you will have to work to work on it at your company. It's why it's also a very good practice to release open source software that you actually use internally, not just a tool that is sitting here that you're not doing anything with. Uh, by, by releasing something that you use every day, you will work on it anyway. So you're just working on something that is also open source that's the best way uh, of doing it. Mind the best factor. Uh, so the best factor is what happens uh, if uh, this member gets it by a bus. So basically, if uh, one person in your project uh, has some kind of trouble, uh, does the project, the project die? It's important because you don't want to be in this situation. Anything that can happen, they can leave, they can decide to stop uh, working on it, whatever. Uh, make sure that you have a team uh, ready to take over and to uh, push you the, um, the project. Communicate, communicate with your com company. Uh, open source is not just uh, ma making something available, but without giving any uh, feedback loop. Feedback loop is important. Uh, so what you want to have uh, is transparency in the code. So what I mean by, uh, by this is that the open source you make available uh, it's here. It's on this repo. If it's on GitHub, it's on GitHub only. Like it's not a subset. Uh, it's not a subset of a private code you have. It's 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 here, and you you work on this because if you don't do that, uh, it's the good way to have uh, differences of uh, synchronization between the two, and uh, it can quickly get mess messy, and uh, it's uh, kind of of uh, kind of uh, it can it can throw off your your users. A good way to do uh, to do also is to be transparent on the roadmap. Uh, your users will start using on it. Will start using your software. Will st will start working on it. Uh, they will also uh, probably start um, building apps with it. So they commit uh, by trusting your software. So make sure that they know where you're going. Maybe they will want to go somewhere else. Maybe uh, a good way to do that is to fork the project, and it's okay. But they should know about it. You also have a lot of tools to do that easily. So you have, for example, Trello. Uh, Twitter, API, uh, Twitter, for example, released uh, their roadmap just recently about the, their API. Uh, you have GitHub projects. That's what we use on uh, MGML. I love GitHub projects because it's really easy to uh, keep everything at the same place. You just add issues uh, in, the, in the roadmap and everything know uh, where you're going with the milestones. It, it makes it uh, really, really crystal clear where you're going. Uh, something cool also is to uh, discuss with your contributors, make sure that they know where they can reach you, whether it's Twitter, whether it's, uh, it's via email, whatever. And uh, even better than that, you can use a communication platform such as um, Gitter, Slack, etc. Be proactive, try to find them uh, where, where they are too. For example, if they use Stack Overflow, try to send a newsletter to use Twitter, etc. Also make sure that it's easy to uh, contribute to uh, your project. So uh, you want to make it easy for people to improve it. Uh, so document, uh, document the code, make sure that it's easy to understand how your code works. There are standards, 
they're here for a reason. So for example, semantic versioning is important for us as we did a markup language. Uh, we keep we stick to the XML syntax, etc. Don't don't uh, underestimate that. Um, also guide guide them. So for example, if they want to submit a bug report, if the, if they want to ask for a feature request, a uh, good way to do that is uh, with the contributing.markdown file. And a very good inspiration that we use for MGML is the Atom uh, contributing guidelines. They are very good and very complete. Um, also, reward your users for the time and effort they put in. Uh, they will spend some of their spare time, so some of their company time. Uh, so there are a few ways to do that. For example, uh, acknowledge them, show them that you trust them, and then when, for example, they solve an issue, uh, it's very valuable for you because it's something that you don't have to spend time on. Uh, so it's easy, it may, might be easy sometimes, but it's really important. Um, try to also put them, sell, put, put them in the spotlight uh, in front of your community, like for some, some, someone uh, ask help or ask to do someone while something, while you might have someone in your community uh, able to do that because they do that very well. And spoil them. Uh, it, can be, uh, it can be also uh, trivial, but uh, giving uh, stickers, giving t-shirts, is a very good way to uh, make them feel special, make them belong to your, to your project. And a good way to do that is also to meet with them. This is, for example, a contributor I met at an event um, in London. It was very nice to be able to meet them and to uh, really yeah, meet someone that you chat with that is involved in your project. Now what's next? Uh, maybe uh, your project will uh, know end of life. Uh, it's something that happens in software, it's a natural evolution. Uh, well, just once again, make sure to communicate about the reasons why you're shutting down the project. You might have good reasons. Um, just communicate about it so people can understand. Uh, what does it mean for the project? So will you like just uh, abandon it, leave it as is? Or will you uh, provide maintenance for the existing issues, for the existing bugs? And also, some people might be interested in uh, taking ownership of it, so consider uh, this, uh, this solution. As a conclusion, uh, open source is always a win-win solution. It's always a cycle about uh, giving and receiving. Um, the only thing is that you want to make it right, so take the time to do it, take the time to, to, to do it right. Uh, it's better not to do it than to do it wrong. Uh, but uh, please do it. It's uh, really good for the developer community and uh, you have probably the resources to do it. You have probably some cool software to show. So try to get involved in, in it. <coughs> Thanks. <laughs>